two dispensations today. Number one, this, okay, the human government. Explanation of the term, why we call the third dispensation. So first one we called innocence. Second we called conscience. Now we are calling third one human government. Why? Rather than relying restrict, strictly on individual conscience, God institute collective conscience for the first time of souls that is authorized to enforce God's laws even to the point of capital punishment. Yeah. First time God is bringing people to, together to rule. Until this time, yes, until this flood, you know, you know, just before, you know, before the flood, there was until the, the God was ruling, striving with men through individual conscience. But for the first time, God is saying, no, I want now to have a collective conscience. Right? That means we want people to gather together to rule. And therefore, we call it as human government. Duration of the dispensation, this is the beginning of the dispensation, is easily identified as a noise fled. And the end is the call of Abraham in chapter 12 in 2090 BC. All right? So that means there begins a new dispensation. So that is the duration, right? Noah to Abraham, beginning of Abraham. Okay. What are the things we need to note here? New revelation. First of all, God's spirit striving with men as the sole primary means of governing men seized with the flood. It's over by the flood. Individual striving is over. Now, kind of group striving is, has begun. God, and how do, we know, how do you know that one? For the first time, God instituted what? Capital punishment. Let's look at Genesis 9, 6 now. Can we read, please? Genesis 9, 6. Anyone? Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed, for in the image of God, he made man. Okay. Yes. So clearly, what you read, whoever, right, whoever sheds man's blood, uh, whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. So that is kind of collective punishment, which is known as a capital punishment, right? So it is inflicted by the corporate will of man, resulting in attention directed toward a grandeur and sovereignty of God and toward accountability of man to God. So what is happening? God is saying, yeah, until this time, each one cares individually. Now I want the world to be ruled now by governments. Right? Uh, you know, collective will, collective conscience. So that's what God said. God placed the fear of animals. Right? Fear of animals is placed in man. Gives man permission to eat. Let's look at the same chapter, verse 2 onwards, 2 to 4. Can we read? Genesis chapter 9, verse 2. Three and four. Anyone? The fear and dread of you will fall upon all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air, upon every creature that moves along the ground and upon all the fish of the sea. They are given into your hands. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you green plants, I now give you everything. Yeah. But you must not eat meat that has its lifeblood in it. All right. Very clear. Everything, right? Yes. Uh, so, God is asking, eat everything, eat everything, which is later you will read, God says, don't eat certain kind of meats, 
don't eat. That's later. Those restriction comes later. So that suggests that you know the restrictions are not inherently um, something has to do with the with the animal itself, right? Because God said you eat everything now. I gave you the plants. So until this, until now, men were vegetarian. Men were vegetarian. God. That that means right now what God has done. God is casting fear of men upon all the beast, right? Fear of men, and now men are allowed to eat, right? Okay. And another thing, you know what happened? God promised that never again destroy the earth by flood. Wow, that is a big one. No more flood to destroy humanity. It doesn't say no more flood. It simply says God is not going to use the flood as a means to judgment, to judge people. Not never again. Okay, so that is the, the main thing about Revelation in this dispensation. And a new, let's look at new administration. Yes, for the first time, we have corporate, corporate political structures, right? Corporate political structures. Because if capital punishment has to carry it out, that means there should be people gathering together to execute the punishment, right? So that, that is a very important political structure. For the first time, political structures came into being. And not only political, apparently there should be some kind of religious structures as well. Yes. Clan leaders functioned as familial priests during this period. So how did the worship, right? Most, you know, usually these the clan leaders, tribal leaders were the priests. Even though you don't see any specific mandates, uh, you would see example, especially I would say Job, right? Job is an example. Uh, Job was a kind of, he, even there is some debate where people say book of Job was first ever written in the Bible. There are some debates. Job, the book of Job is very, very old book. Very old book, right? And, and that's the reason you also have some information about um, dinosaurs in the book of Job. And another thing is, um, if you look at Job was a contemporary of patriarch, maybe earlier than patriarchs, right? So, uh, and where, where you see Job is offering sacrifices. So that is kind of, uh, you, even though you don't see any mandate, uh, that is widely accepted that in the early days, the, you know, the, the, the father of the tribe or, um, you know, clan was the elder, the leader of the clan were the priest. Uh, so there is some kind of uh, religious structures began forming in the beginning itself, beginning itself. So that means you would see some change happening. And this change is carries over even Genesis chapter 14. Uh, you would see the same thing that is happening. And later Abraham is doing uh, so in the beginning, priesthood was not particularly designed that way, um, but it was a leader of a clan was the one who was offering sacrifices. What are the responsibilities in this dispensation? Man was mutually rule his fellow man, some kind of democracy, governing the earth with orderliness and righteousness. He was able to protect the sanctity of life. Right? That means do not eat, eat an animal that has blood. The idea is that the animal has to die because blood was the symbol of symbol of life. So God wants to make sure that you kill the animal before you eat. Don't eat live animal. <laughs> that is the point. Right. And thereby draw attention to man's responsibilities and accountabilities to God. The next one is continuing principles. What are the things that would continue now? 
That's quite interesting there. Man has continued responsibility to maintain human government, right? Including the continued maintenance of capital punishment in all dispensations. Yes. So capital punishment, now this is something that continues throughout, that began in the dispensation of human government. And then you, when you come into the New Testament, you know what? You read, yes, governmental structures were ordained by God so that people would seek him, right? And in Romans, clearly says, it, government leaders are God's servants, whether they are believers or you know, it's, he's talking about the time into the Romans during the time of Caesar, you know, Nero and other people who were ruling. It says, you know, I appointed them. They are my servants, right? So the responsibility of the government is what? To punish evil behavior up to and including capital punishment and approve good behavior, right? Good behavior, acting as God's representative and thus pointed to God. Let's look at this passage. I think it is important here about human government. Romans chapter 13. Let's read this one. Romans 13. Even though sometimes people may not like their government, let's hear what God says about governments. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 7. Can one of you please read? Anyone? On. Okay, Roman 13, 1 to 7. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, uh, the he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, uh, but for those who do wrong. Do, do you want to be uh, free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and he will uh, commend you. For he is God's servant to do you good, but if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for, for nothing. He is God's servant, an, an agent of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoers. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, uh, not only because of possible punishment, but, but also because of con conscience. This is also why you pay taxes for the authorities, are God's servant who give their full time to governing. Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If uh, revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. All right. Well, that is very clear where Paul says, even though at that time, uh, the Roman government was not at all supportive to Christianity actually was against the Christians and Paul is going to be killed under the same government and still that's how he explained the government which is I think uh, which is very important that you learn and study that passage uh, about it so people talk about you know fighting against the government and things like that yes so these are some of the things to to remember here it's government human government is very important all right so that is the third dispensation that means now we need to go to the fourth dispensation what is that dispensation of promise promise okay let's look at the term god on multiple occasions draws attention to the promises made to abraham as a key juncture in history of mankind so the promise that genesis chapter 12 is actually in a key juncture of human history and notes that these promises are not repealed either by giving of the law or the institution of the church 
as some people might think, I'm saying here, it's not repealed at all. These promises not only funnel the promises given to Abraham, the seed of Abraham, uh, I'm sorry, promises given to Adam through the seed of Abraham, but also signal fundamentally new arrangement whereby man may be rightly related to God. So there is a new arrangement we see by from the call of Abraham, right? In Genesis chapter 12. And duration of the, the dispensation. How long this dispensation was there? The dispensation of promise begins with the call of Abraham in Genesis 12. Later he became Abraham. And formally with the Abrahamic covenant, that is in Genesis 15. Remember, we saw that in the Exodus and was publicized to the world through the words of words and actions of Melchizedek. The dispensation continues until God radically expands his expectations for Israel and her Gentile neighbors by establishing a Jewish nation under Mosaic law. So that means it begins from Genesis 12, from the call of Abraham, until the new nation was established by Moses when he gave the commandments to Israel when the law came, right? So it begins from promise till the law, till the law. That is what the fourth dispensation, right? New revelation. What are the things we see primarily here? We know the verse, right? Genesis 12. We have read several times, so we are very clear. What did he say? God said, leave your country, right? Your people, your father's household, right? Leave the Ur of Chaldeans, right? And what do you do? Go to the land. I will show you. Land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. And I will bless you. I will make your name great. And, I, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the people on the earth will be blessed through you. So this is the call. Right? There are primarily three things to be noted here. Primarily three things. Number one, an ethnic people of God. I will make you into a great nation. Right? Great nation. And that is very important. Ethnic people that is talking about Israel as a nation. Then, yes, it also, and of course there are, this is repeating many places, right? 13, 16, 15, 13, 17, 2, and 6. The, the people, a, a people, Israel. Then there is a specific land for the people. And this is not only, uh, God said, go to the land, I will show you, right? Now, not only that, that is repeated in chapter 13, verse 14 to 17, and especially in the Abrahamic covenant, chapter 15. The land was so important for Jewish people. And third, third, so people of God, land for the people. Third, establishment of personal, familial, and also universal blessing, right? Universal blessing. I will, yeah, people on the earth will be blessed. So here is a universal blessing that happens through whom? Through Christ. Yes, Matthew begins, Jesus Christ is the son of Abraham. And son of David. That's how he begins. So, which clearly says, yes, Abrahamic promise comes to the world through Jesus Christ. So, this is what the promise, some of the information that we need to understand, the revelation that God gave. New administration. Now the world was not governed, not to be governed by Abram is clear. Right? Uh, the world is not going to be governed by Simply Abraham. That means what? Because God said, I am going to make you a great nation. That means there will be other nations. So national distinctions were to continue. There will be many nations. Remember, that's a reason in chapter 9 itself. 
Yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's not chapter 9. Chapter 10. You have the names of various nations. Right? And in chapter 11, you have the context of how come there are many nations. What do you read in chapter 11? Power of Babel. Remember? Confusion. Confusing the tongue. So chapter 10 is the place where you will see many linguistic groups. Chapter 11 actually talks about the context of why, have, why there were many. It is the confusion that happened. So that means there after, after the uh, flood, the human government started to form. Government started to come. Nations started to form. People started to gather together as separate countries. Right? So in chapter 12, God says, I will make you a great nation. So, so that means the world is not going to be governed by Abraham. Right? There are going to be nations. However, the whole world is severally governed, but nonetheless to recognize Abraham as the conduit of God's blessing. Right? Yes. Even though many people are going to rule the world, learn Abram is the channel of God's blessing. And honor him and his seed as the exclusive means to redemptive blessings. Yes, that's how we learn, we understand. So Abram, Abram is the key figure for all people because the blessing to the world comes from the seed of Abraham. All right, that's a new administration. So there is going to be uh, a promise of a nation coming up. New responsibilities for Abraham and his seed. What are the things they need to believe? Believe in God's promise as detailed in Abrahamic covenant. They have to believe it. All right, number one. Second, Receive the right of circumcision as a sign of the covenant. Sign of what covenant? Abrahamic covenant. They have to receive what? Circumcision. Third, maintain purity from other nations. Look at that one. Let's look at Genesis 24 here. Uh, I want us to read Genesis 24 verse 4. We'll read a few verses. 24.4. Yes. But we'll go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. Okay. Number one, let's look at chapter... Uh, 26 verse 34 to 35. 26 verse 34. When Esau was 40 years old, he married Judith, daughter of Biri, the Hittite, and also Besimath, daughter of Elon, the Hittite. They were a source of grief to Isaac and uh -huh. Rebekah. Okay. And uh, 27, 46. Okay. Yeah, okay, you are muted. Uh, <laughs> uh. Oh, sorry. Uh, then Rebecca said to Isaac, I am disgusted with living because of this Hittite woman. If Jacob takes a wife from among the women of the land from Hittite women like these, my life will not be worth living. All right. So clearly, as you read, you will see God says, you know, maintain a purity from other nation because no, these are not going to be good for you. Right. That's number one. And and of course, in chapter 26, 
maintain residency in the land of promise? Maybe, yes. Let's look at that also. 26 verse 1 to 5. Now there was a famine in the land besides the earlier famine of Abraham's time and Isaac went to Abimelech king of Philistine in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while and I'll be with you and I'll bless you. For you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars of the sky and will give them all these lands and through your offspring all nations on the earth will be blessed. Because Abraham <coughs> obeyed me and kept my requirements, my commands, my decrees and my laws. laws. All right. So it's kind of God is saying, you mean to stay there, right? So, of course, so what we understand, there is responsibilities for Abraham and his seed, what they have to do during this time period. For all mankind, what are they supposed to do? Believe in God's promise as detailed in the Abrahamic covenant, right? Number one, believe what God said in the covenant that God made. This is for all. Right, other people. Second, bless Abraham as a seed as the means to continue blessing. So, what was the point? All mankind could be rightly related to God via through Abrahamic covenant by being rightly related to the seed. This does not mean, however, Gentiles may at some point replace Abraham's physical seed as the heirs of the terms of the Abrahamic covenant, but they can believe and be saved. Gentiles can be saved if they believed in Abrahamic promises and, and see him as the channel of blessing to them. All right, continuing principles here. Though the ethnic people of God have been temporarily set aside in the current dispensation, promises of God detailed in Genesis 12 and 15 are irrevocable and incapable of being abrogated or amended. Yes. So the blessings that God gave to Abraham, remember three things. Number one, there is a, a nation, right? Or no, I would say a yeah, race and a land and, right, blessing and a seed, right? Three things. And those th three things are still would continue, would continue. That means, yes, Israel will be one day established as a nation one more time. They will have the land. And of course, seed is Jesus Christ. So that's how we would see, we will read in Romans chapter 11, uh, you know, all Israels will be saved one day. Right. Of course, what does that mean? That, that is for a future discussion. All right. So continuing principles. These promises that God made to Abraham would continue. Promise of justification by faith is not annulled by giving of the law. Right. Abraham was justified by faith. Don't think that in the law people were justified by works. Absolutely no. It continues the present age, rendering men eligible for the promised Holy Spirit by faith, by faith. So I'm, I'm saying uh, the promise of justification by faith also would continue even this dispensation because about Abraham, it clearly says Abraham was justified by faith, all right? And would that change? Never going to be changed. All right, so that is what about dispensation of promise. So today we looked at two dispensations, dispensation of human government, and do a dispensation of promise. Tomorrow we will look at the dispensation of law.